The team loved Adam for the way he played. He was selfless to the need of his teammates, relentless in his running from the first minute to the last, always courageous in the fight. He was the engine to our train. He was simply a true team player. An honest player, a runner, um, someone who'd give you everything, um, every minute of every single game and in training as well. Um, but my main memories really as him as a person, um, I, I was um, new into the, the full-time professional football environment um, and Stano welcomed us um, and was a really good character to have around at the change room. Um, someone for, for younger players to look up to and, and admire, um, but also someone who, like I say, went out of his way to make you, make you feel welcome um, and was part of a really good dressing room we had at the time. Stano will never be forgotten. He, he is the talisman, really, of the club when he, um, he embedded what the club was about. and. Um, if, any, if every player who exits do sign, go in there and give a hundred percent what he gave every week, um, the club would be in um, a great place going forward. Had to work hard at everything he did. Had to practice, you know, lack this and lack that. Therefore, worked at it. Tried to get himself better every day. Earned his money every single day. Never moaned about being left out of the team. Just got on with life. Got on with his problem. And um, such a sad, sad, sad loss. We 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 are really devastated by this. Stano was he's just so he worked so hard all the time and it was such a shock when, when that all happened obviously and it just brought everything into perspective. Football wasn't even important anymore. But as a player, I mean you could kick it in completely the wrong area up the pitch and Stano somehow would be able to be he'd sprint and get it and be able to get on the end of it and it made that pass look like it was intended to go there and pretty much all of my passes were like that so he was he was one of those people that just worked so hard for the team but also was very calm off the pitch and relaxed guy and and good to have around so it was it was a it was a tough moment for the dressing room and of course even harder for his family, his friends, and, and even the fans because he, he was such a great guy. And uh, I made a thing before the game, uh, during the build up to it, that if we scored, wherever, wherever time, I was going to hold the shirt up with Stano. I said, that was definitely what I want to do. I said, and the players were great. They were like, yeah, we, that's, we've got to do that. And, um, and uh, yeah, it just, just happened to be, it was my cross, and then we scored in the ninth minute. It was just, it was just iconic. It was just one of those, one of those moments that I, I still live to this day. And um, yeah, it was. And it, I look back at it now, and I, I remember uh, my son asked questions about it, and like we were watching the Oxford game back the other day, and he was going, "God, Stano kept running, didn't he?" And I said, "Yeah, he was a machine." Absolute machine. And his willingness to run was incredible. Um, I've not seen that that willingness matched um, in the rest of my career, both both as a player or as a, a coach or a manager. Um, so that's something he had in abundance. And, and it's incredible where he got that energy from um, because he, he just kept on going and kept on going. And even when he had nothing left in his legs, he, he found a, find a little bit more in there as well. So um, a really honest lad. Um, and he had a little bit of quality to, to, to add to that as well, which is why he had such a good career. He was always there for me. He loved me. He was always... So, for like one time, um, well, it was at the um, Rotherham season when I got promotion. Um, I was going through a bit of time. I was struggling with um, anxiety and stuff, and I was, then I was on panic attacks at home and stuff. It was crazy. I didn't know what was going on. And then we played Luton away actually, and um, I couldn't play because I had to call the ambulance out night in the hotel because I had another panic attack. And um, I was on the bus, and afterwards, Stan was the first one to come on the bus. So I was just waiting on the bus after the game because I was all over the place, and he just hug me and like give me a like a kiss and said, mate, you'll be all right, you know what I mean? Things like that. And he's that sort of guy who's always there for me. And um I could um if I want to chat to him, I know he would um he'd always be there. He made me laugh. It, it was probably two or three years before this and uh, this is going back a bit and um we, we started to room together and um he was like told he said, you know um I have rituals like on the night before a game and I was like, all right, I was thinking what's he going to be doing like what's, what's this and he went so we go down have our pre-match uh, had our evening meal come back to the rooms there about half eight played a bit of cards and then uh, he's like knock on the door there about half nine he went he said you better get it toes i said what do you mean so i went and opened the door there's a barman there and he's two pints and i was like <laughs> what you, what, what, what's that stan and he went oh that gets me to sleep so if i have a good night's sleep i'm guaranteed i'll, I'll, I'll do all right tomorrow and i was like it's just every friday he said, well, when I'm at home, I normally have probably two more. And I was like, 
<laughs> I was like, oh god. But yeah, literally, and it was like that was our secret. That was our that was Feinstein's little secret that a couple pints, he'd have his couple pints a night on a Friday, he'd get him to sleep, and yeah, he'd be gone. He was like, but he was like brilliant. That was but that was him. And and the following day, would it affect him? Of course it wouldn't, because I've never seen anyone run so much. So mm. um but yeah, good times. Good time. You know you're going to have a bad touch here and there, but the fans just get behind you as long as they see you working, which I took that from Stano in the end, really, that he didn't stop, did he? Every, he'd give 110% and he, 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 um, he is what the club was all about. So I just tried, if I could do like even 20, 30% of what he'd done, running around, um, I knew I, that'd be good and the fans would appreciate it. And it's something we're, um, we're never going to forget in terms of what he did and what he stood for. Um, and the fans will, will rightly sing his name whenever possible. And, and we've got the flags and we've got the banners and, and we've got the stand named after him. Um, and we continue, continue to support his family, but also the, the Adam Stansfield Foundation as well, which is doing great causes uh, in and around the, the local communities. Um, it's great when uh, someone from the local area does so well, um, at a club which is, is close to their heart. And, and that's where you get that special relationship with the fans. Yeah, uh, mixed emotions for me. Standing here, possibly pride, you know, doing it for yourselves, but obviously sad that Adam's not with us to uh, to be on here to 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 receive the support. Um, it's uh, it's obviously it is what it is, but uh, I think it's what he deserves. I'm sure he would like all the fuss with all this, but uh, it's, it's definitely what he deserves. And uh, yeah, I'm very proud. Thank you. Standing is what we saw on a match day. He, uh, he never gave defenders a minute's peace, including us in training. Um, he, he chased balls into the corner. He, he did everything for the team. And uh, that's why we wanted him in our, in our squad, in our, in our team, in our dressing room. He was, he was one of the lads. He was, he was fantastic. He was, he was a privilege to have him and to be friends with him. Um, he, was, he was my roommate. And, uh, I got to know him pretty well on the way. Trips, you'd walk past him, he'd smile, he'd say hello, he'd, he'd smile, um, he'd grab a beer with him, he'd smile, um, he'd train, he'd, he'd run after a ball, he'd, he'd keep on smiling, he'd, he'd just his attitude and his, his personality. Um, and he'll be remembered as a footballer, but the, the, the type of person he was was, was second to none. Um, and that, that's what we, we all remember him for the most here. Um, and like I say, when I first came to the club, that's, that's what I remember more than anything, um, the way he welcomed us in and, and the smile and the personality which he had to go with it. Being on the big bank the day after Adam died, um, all the way through, every, the support that everybody's given us and, and what's happening still, you know, it just keeps him with us. You know, he's, he's there with us all the time. I think if there was one player that many of our supporters would, would like to be, if they had a chance for one day to play for Exeter, it would have been Adam Stansfield.